says Anthony um, during as my name because of course it wouldn't be a Zoom meeting without some technical issues going on. And so my computer has been a little bit haywire today and Anthony and I are gonna share. Um, just kind of a quick introduction for me. I've been in human resources for four years, my entire career outside of graduating. Um, and so I have a little bit of background in that regards, um, just coming to you from seeing on the talent acquisition side, lots of opportunities for people at Clemson University and in the private sector, I actually worked in automotive engineering for a little while. So just kind of coming to you from that background, if you have any um, particular questions at the end about those, I'd be happy to answer some, but we're going to go into some benefit considerations and salary expectations when you're considering an offer. And I will quickly slide it over to Anthony to introduce himself. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Anthony McKnight, and I am the Talent Acquisition Programs Manager here. I manage the Spousal Assistance Program, as well as the temporary pools and retirement pools here for the university, as well as all backgrounds for the entire university. So um, just to give you a little bit of information about my background, um, I am originally from the property management sector. Um, I transitioned into HR about a year ago. And prior to being in property management, I did a little bit of everything. So um, although I don't have as much extensive HR background as Kelsey, I do have quite a bit of uh, experience with salary expectations and negotiating offers from the different fields that I've worked in. Perfect. So he is um, just a major player in the game and his experience might be a little bit better for you guys than, than mine. So with all that being said, we'll get started. Sorry, my computer is funny. Okay, so I'll quickly just go over some benefit considerations. Hopefully, most people here know the general benefits that you would receive when getting a full-time offer from a company. Um, but there are some things to consider when you're accepting that offer. So the first thing that you want to do is ask them if they haven't already provided it to you or um, given you kind of a rundown within the interview is when you receive that offer, ask them for their benefits information. The most prominent thing that people will probably talk about are their insurance plans. Most of them are going to have multiple options, such as a high deductible plan, an HSA, a PPO, all of those will look a little bit differently depending on the company that you're with. Um, most will also include health, dental, and vision. But what's important here to consider are the monthly premiums for those plans. Is there a particular plan for an individual? I know most of you guys are young and single and probably coming out um, with nothing but yourself and you're pretty healthy. Um, so is there an option or a plan for people like that? Um, are they mainly going to be the very high premium plans? Um, I've seen $700 premiums before, which was completely outrageous. So kind of knowing what that monthly premium will be, these, these can be pre-tax premiums. So knowing is that an option to have it taken out pre-tax? Are you going to be paying taxes on the premiums as well? And then what's going to be covered in your insurance? So currently I'm working for Clemson University. I have the state insurance and it is, it does cover minimal, um, it's, it's minimal coverage is what I will say. So ambulance rides, is that going to be covered? Um, are there going to be things for fertility that are covered? That's very important. It's not in the typical insurance plan. So it's important that you know what is going to be covered on that insurance and then what that copay and deductible is. So if you are on a monthly prescription, taking into consideration with the offer, what that monthly premium for the insurance will be, and then what that regular copay for that monthly prescription is gonna be. Those are very important. If you're working with someone like I did previously in the automotive engineering sector, I had no monthly premiums. Um, I will say my salary was kind of a little bit lower but they paid $200 a month for my premiums that did not come out of my salary. 
So I included that in my overall salary pay for the year and it put me up to market. So those are some very important things to consider um, when you're reviewing the benefits package with an offer. Also, one of the things people don't usually consider with a benefits package, but is very important is career development. So you can ask about career paths or ladders. Usually you wanna ask this in an interview, but just in case it's not covered, part of that benefits package for you is gonna be that career path or ladder. Where are you expected to go? How quickly are people promoted? Is there training? Um, those are all very important. You can be offered a job that has a great salary, but if everybody stays in that same position for 10 to 15 years, are you going to be happy and excited about that? Or would you rather have something with maybe a little bit lower salary and gives you the opportunity for growth every two to five years? What is, what's your interest? And either one of those could work for you. It just depends on how you feel about the role and, and what your goals are. Um, and then also very important for career development as well is the student loan repayment assistance. We are seeing this more and more within private and public sector. Um, some of it, they will pay as you are taking those classes and some of them will pay it back for your loans. So the student loan repayment assistance, that's very important to note within your entire benefits package. If they're gonna pay $100 a month towards your student loans, that's $1,200 a year. Um, in addition to what you may pay on your student loans that you're getting. And then if you also include, maybe that's $100 a year on top of your regular payment, every, everything that you're gonna be saving on those interest rates. So really diving deep into the considerations for that particular benefit is very important for the long run goal. And work-life balance, I think, Everybody can, can talk about how important work-life balance is. Um, in general, most private sector and public sector will give about at least two weeks of paid time off. I know in the private sector, the standard is two weeks. In the public sector, it can be a little bit more. Um, it is generally increasing. We've seen with COVID a lot of competitiveness within the industries. And so they're increasing the paid time off. Um, but that's very important to, to understand that aspect. How, how, much, how many weeks of paid time off are you going to get? Is that different from sick leave? Usually it is. Usually you get an additional two weeks of sick leave, but that might include be included in those two weeks. So it's important to know what that paid time off looks like. And does it roll over if it's unused? Thankfully, the Clemson University allows you to roll over a certain amount of days, which is fantastic for a person like myself who doesn't go on vacation very often. Um, but I have also worked in areas where they don't allow you to roll it over. So if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, and what does that look like for you? Are, are you a person who would probably take it all? I kind of felt like I needed to take it all every year when I had that going on. So um, just kind of understanding what does that mean for you and do they have paid parental leave? So if you have children or if you are planning to adopt, things like that, a lot of times you have to take FMLA, which is leave, but it's unpaid. And that can be very hard on a family. Um, so do they have that opportunity for paid parental leave and what are the requirements for that? And then do they have a leave pool to use if you run out of leave? So for some reason, if something were to happen to you and you break a leg and you use your two weeks of leave, do they have a leave pool to use for you when you run out of leave? Clemson University does have that, which is fantastic. Um, so if you were to have an injury or something like that, you can not worry about your finances as much. And that does create a lot of sustainability and you just feel a little bit more taken care of in that culture. Um, so that's a very important aspect to know. And then um, what are the standard hours for the work-life balance and are they flexible? So well, I'll talk about this a little bit on the next slide as well, but for general work-life balance, I have seen and I have worked 60-hour work weeks and I have worked the typical 40-hour work weeks before. 
And I will say 40 hours is better than 60 hours um, personally. So is that important to you at this moment in your life? And it does change over time. So it could be that 60 hours a week right now for you is perfectly okay. Um, but understanding what those standards hours are, are they flexible? Um, so if something were to happen, if you did have um, a sick family member or a child that you needed to take to preschool, could you start your day at 8.15 instead of eight o'clock? Those are very important considerations in the benefits package. I know I personally would probably take a lower pay just to have that flexibility in my life. Um, so, it, but it depends on what's important to you. So just understanding the job that you're going into as well for work-life balance. And then something I did quickly want to just touch on is the new trend of a hybrid or remote schedule. Not all industries are taking this on. Um, some of them are holding tight to the in-person nine to five work week as much as possible. And that's completely fine. And it really depends on the job that you're doing. But many of the industries now are moving toward to more hybrid or remote schedule. So when you are interviewing or expecting an offer for a job like this, there are some important things to consider. Um, are there expected online times or is it flexible? So if you are a person who likes to get up at 3 a.m., which we have somebody like that in our office, can they start working at 6 a.m. and work the 6 to 3 or 6 to 2 instead of the typical 9 to 5 or 8 to 4.30? Um, are there options for that flexibility around scheduling or are you stuck to that nine to five? You have to be online during this time. And what would the office visits be like? So if you are going to be hybrid, when are you visiting the office? Is it a set schedule? Does it change every single week or will it depend on what's going on? And then also with that hybrid schedule um, or if you are offered a remote position, say you're out of state and you're offered a remote position. I would strongly encourage you to ask them, are there any times within this job that I would need to come into the office? And if that is the case, then is the company going to fund that travel expense? Because if you're offered a fully remote position, there might be times when they expect you to come into the home office, say Georgia, and, and that would be important for you to know who's gonna fund that expense or with training. It's very important to know what the training is going to look like in a hybrid or remote environment. Is all the training also gonna be remote? Are you gonna expect it to visit that home office for three months during that training? Um, most of the time I will say, if they're gonna be offering a hybrid or remote position, then the training will also be something they can do in a hybrid or remote environment, but you never know. And so it's important to understand the aspects there um, before accepting the offer. So you can have your, your expectations set and know what your next few weeks or months are gonna look like. All right, so we're gonna switch gears here and talk a little bit about salary. So, um, and let's talk about dollars. First thing I wanted to do was be intentional about providing the photo that I attached to the slide. A lot of the times it can be a little bit intimidating to talk about finances or, well, not so much finance, but the um, salary that's accompanied with a job when you're talking to a new employer. So although um, it may be um, uncomfortable, we want to train ourselves to become more comfortable because being honest with ourselves, we want to make sure that we're not going to work for somebody who's going to make us feel uncomfortable and who's going to treat uh, salary like a like a un like uncharted waters, so to speak. So in doing that, um, just wanted to encourage everyone to make sure that you feel comfortable about talking about uh, salary expectation when you're going to look into starting a new job. So first thing we wanna do is we want to be prepared by understanding the market. And when I say that, I, I mean, uh, do a little bit of research so that you know the industry that you're going into and you know the uh, salary ranges that are accompanied with that industry. Um, then you want to also understand how your specific employer weighs their candidate values. So are they looking for a candidate that has a little bit more education versus a candidate that has experience? Or are they looking for the candidate that has ample experience and they're not really concerned about the education? 
those things are going to be important when they're deciding what the salary expectation is or how much they're going to offer you in uh, accepting that position. Then we also have to be honest with ourselves. We have to take a self-assessment and set realistic expectations about what we expect the salary that we're going to accept is going to be for that position. So all of that comes into account when you're preparing to negotiate. And once you have an informed, uh, once you have all the information gathered in one area, you can make an informed decision and you'll know your worth and you can, so to speak, add tax. So as far as uh, conducting the research, I uh, included uh, two industry tool research tools that can be utilized to kind of gauge the salary expectation ranges for different positions. Glassdoor uh, is a very notable search engine that uh, uses you know, reviews from different employees that are already in those industries, um, in those companies worldwide. And they use the confidence tool, which is a pay estimate model that utilizes information gathered from professionals in the same industry and in your target area. Payscale utilizes a little bit different approach to giving you the um, salary expectations. So what they'll do is Payscale will ask you to fill out a survey. In that survey, you will include your education. You'll also include information about your years of experience in that field. And then they'll use HRIS, HRIS aggregated information as well as uh, survey publisher data to build a report for you that's personalized and a little bit more specific. So in giving an example of this, um, I went on ahead and done a pay scale report for the director of student services. In this case, this individual was offered $64,000 as a salary. So based on the range, the top of that salary range was 75K for different people in the same uh, industry with the same work title. And the bottom of that was about 45,000. This person being offered 65,000 seems like they've gotten a pretty good offer. So what we want to do is once you have that offer information, you want to establish a strong base. Ideally, you will have established that base before walking into the offer negotiations. But um, if you have not done any research on the industry and you do not have this information, the $65,000 offer would have been a good offer to accept. We also want to remember, you don't have to feel pressured to provide an answer right away. So you can take your time and reconsider your offers. Or if you have other offers that are going to be on the table and you just don't know which one you want to accept, this is also another good reason to take time. You wanna be prepared to justify as well if you decide to make a counter offer on the amount that they're gonna give you. You have to be, so having all the tools at your disposal, doing the research before can help you with your confidence. And always remember that work culture is important as well. You can make all the money in the world, but be, but be miserable in the position that you accept. So wanting to take a step back after you have all your information and all the different salary expectations lined up and just remembering that work-life balance that Kelsey addressed before, and you want to prioritize your needs. So once you accepted the offer as well, you want to be intentional in reviewing your offer letters and saying that if you are going to be relocating to another area, you wanna make sure that you are making sure all of the monetary information that was discussed during the interviewing process or the offer negotiation will be included in that letter. So if there was, so if you accepted the job for the 65,000 that was addressed in the example, and they told you they were gonna give you a $5,000 relocation bonus, we wanna make sure that that's gonna be included. Although it's not a contract, it's better to have something in writing to show in case something pops up in the future and you need to fall back on that information. And you also want to protect your brand. And when doing that, I say it's, it's kind of, it's exciting accepting a new offer, getting that, landing that job. So it's gonna be a little bit tempting to, I can start whenever you want me to, but a part of protecting your brand and showing, and showing professional courtesy is 
leaving that old position if you are currently in one in a good manner. So providing a two weeks notice to your current employer. You also have to understand that starting the job with the new employer, they're watching how you're going to leave that old job behind. So if they see that you were, are willing to just cut ties abruptly, not give them any notice at all, that new employer is gonna take note of that. And when it comes time for you to either vacate your current position or receive a promotion, they're going to be a little bit more, um, well, I won't say a little bit more, I'll say a little bit hesitant in moving forward with your consideration. And always, consider, always remember less is more. Don't go into a new situation speaking, um, in a way that may be detrimental to your old company, as you could find yourself in a lawsuit from sharing company secrets or trade secrets. And you want to be sure to discuss all job expectations in detail before you commit. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap up all the uh, meat and potatoes of the presentation. We have included a few helpful links here as far as um, where we found a lot of the information here, we have Glassdoor, the link to Glassdoor, uh, Payscale, SHRM, which we have the benefit information from as well. So I'm gonna pass the uh, presentation back over to Kelsey and let her wrap up for you. So just in general, um, we hope that this was helpful for you. Sorry, I have my headphones and listening, um, but we hope that this is helpful information for you. It does depend on the industry that you are in, if it's private, if it's public, um, and where you stand within that market. So unfortunately, we couldn't get into the nitty gritties of an offer because we know that as students, you guys are coming from all different walks of life all different levels of experience and, and different um, industries that you're gonna be going into, whether it's education, engineering, or science. And so we just wanted to brush up on some of the things that we feel, at least in today's market, um, is very important. We're in the great resignation is what HR is calling it. Um, so there is a lot of competition out there and you wanna ensure that you're getting the best offer possible. Um, and also considering the job that you're in making sure that you're getting a job that you're happy with. And the beginnings of that relationship with your supervisor starts with an offer. So we're hoping that this was helpful for, uh, for you and please let us know if you have any questions at all. That was super helpful for me, just in case anybody was curious. As y'all were type or talking, I'm typing out a whole bunch of notes. Um, so that's been extremely beneficial. Um, and I just put into the chat, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to unmute or drop them into the chat, whatever you are most comfortable with would be awesome. And y'all have already gotten a thank you. That's awesome. And what's great about it, since I recorded it, it will be on our um, center's page for future reference. If y'all miss something, want to hear Kelsey or Anthony talk about um, something again, it will be there. And we can send those links over. Awesome. Um, the Glassdoor link was to the salary page yes. and um, the pay scale link was to their general for individuals page, but you can create a profile like Anthony was talking about um, for yourself. And you can, when I was in college, I would do different things. Um, what if I went into this industry? What does it look like if I go into this industry? Um, so you can just do it over and over again with whatever you want to see what those different options are for you. And like Anthony was saying, it's usually better to do it ahead of time. So when you know you have an interview with someone, go ahead and look up, you know, you can put in the employer, what would I expect if I were to receive an offer? Things like that, because there are times when they're gonna ask you about your salary expectation in the actual interview. So we'd recommend um, having that prepared ahead of time and at least knowing what your bar level will be. Um, before you get even into the interview with the company. I'm going to ask a question because I'd love to hear what y'all think. So if that happens in, a, in an interview, because I get asked this a lot, um, what would be, besides doing your background homework, things like that, is there any specific suggestions or kind of technique that y'all would suggest of walking through that with a company? Do you give them 
like a large range, a little range, um, a specific number? What do you think? So I would say, I would say um, in navigating that situation, you should already have a bottom number in mind from even entering into the interview. You should already have that bottom number. I'm not willing to go lower than this, but you don't want to give them that bottom number. Generally in negotiations, the first person to speak is going to lose. So if you give them that bottom number, they're probably gonna expect, oh, well, I can just you know, give them the number they suggested versus something you'd really want. So I would navigate that question by saying, while, while I expect to have a salary that is commensurate with my specific um, education and background, I am willing to negotiate uh, within reason any salary range that you all are willing to pay. And um, I would agree with Anthony wholeheartedly. It's important to have your research, but like he said, sometimes you don't you don't want to be the first person to state uh, that number. And so I have in the past um, just said, you know, I, I need to consider the job. I have more questions. I need some more information about the expectations before I can provide that number, especially if it's just an interview where it's a very quick um here's what we do, here's what you're expected to do, and then they're interviewing you, and then they want to go immediately into some salary conversations, which I have had that before. Um, so just knowing ahead of time that that's probably going to be coming and preparing to say, I would, I would need to see a benefits package, I, I need to know how it compares to my current situation, um, and be able to understand the role fully before I can give you an expectation for where I would fit within your salary range. And then I would ask them, do you have a range in mind for this position? So I almost always put that back onto the employer to see if they would be willing to provide that range for me. Yeah. That's awesome. I know it's easier said than done in person when you're nervous. So if you happen to give a minimum, that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you if you feel comfortable, we would suggest that route. That's awesome. That's super helpful. I hope everybody listened to that answer because I know we get that question all the time. Um, and it's helpful to hear HR professionals say the same thing that we do as well. So that's great. Does anybody before, because I just want to be respectful of everybody's time, make sure that we we wrap up when we need to. Does anybody have any questions? I'm getting some thank yous and things like that in the chat, which is awesome. All right, seeing none, um, I just want to thank Kelsey and Anthony. That was super helpful. I know I said that before, but I took notes. Um, I will probably rewatch it again just <laughs> as we finish to, to catch the few things that I may have missed. Um, but that was excellent. I'm very thankful that y'all had an opportunity to talk. This is a subject that we have lots of students ask lots of questions about. And so it's really nice um, for someone with y'all's experience to talk about. Um, and with that, if y'all have nothing else, I'm gonna let everybody jump off. Um, and if anybody has a last minute question, I do have their contact information. So if that's okay, I may shoot questions later y'all's way as well. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. If anything does come up, um, feel free to share it with us. But thank you guys for listening and having us. Thank you so much. Y'all yes. have a great day, everybody. <laughs>